Now consider that we've been provided a design of this 3D model. However, we've only been given a 2D drawing or a 2D representation of the part to be machined. So the, the CNC programmer has been only provided just a drawing of the final representation of the part and without having to construct a 3D model, we will use the cut levels, the cut depth controls that we learned just a short while ago and how we can apply that when programming a part by just using the 2D information. So this particular example that you're looking at here, the total thickness of the part is one inch as you see it from the information in the drawing here. And it has stepped features in here. So we'll go through the process of programming it by just working off a 2D drawing. So we have the 2D drawing that's provided to us. We have established a stock by creating a cylinder stock. And the finished height of the part is going to be one inch. But since we would like to face the top of the blank, we will be starting with the stock that's 1.1 inch in thickness. The finished diameter of the part is six and a half inches. So the radius would be three and a quarter, but I would like to have a little bit of clearance so I could go finish it, not leave a factory edge. So I'm gonna start with a radius of 3.3, .3, which is 6.6 .6 inches in diameter. So we've established the stock definition. Click on stock visibility. The next step is to establish our alignment. So we're gonna align the stock and I'm gonna choose at bottom since I would like to remove the 100 thousands from the top face of the stock. So I'm gonna choose at bottom. The next thing I'm gonna do is establish the work zero and I'm gonna go into work zero. This is basically work zero represents your work coordinate origin or your program zero which means when you place the workpiece on your CNC machine tool, where would you like to touch off to establish your 000? So for this particular example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use set to stock, higher Z for the zero face, and the center in X and Y, since it's a circular blank, I will be setting the zero to the top face and the center in X and Y as you notice it. Now any operations that we program under the work zero will use the XYZ origin based off the work zero that you created. Now if you program an operation that's above the work zero, it's going to use the location where you have your world coordinate system origin defined. So you want to make sure that you highlight the work zero and then start programming the operation. So this would automatically use the XYZ origin that you established for your work coordinate origin. So the first operation I'm going to be programming here will be a facing. And in this particular example, I'm not going to be selecting any machining region. I'll just pick a tool. And in the cut levels, I'm just going to leave it with the default settings will pick generate. I'm going to select yes and you'll notice that the system automatically takes into account the stock silhouette and creates a toolpath at the top where the stock silhouette is located so you can see the Z display shows zero. Since the stock we would like to take out hundred thousands for the total cut depth I will enter the total cut depth value as hundred thousands in here and generate it. So this basically takes it down to the finished face of your part in one operation. I'm gonna select pause and simulate to end. In the next step, I would like to go ahead and face around this region so that the boss feature is created on the model. As you see right here, and to do that, I'm gonna go back and use another facing operation. I'll make a copy of this facing operation in here. And we will now 
select regions. I'm going to clear these options. I'm going to pick this, the outer circle, and the inner circle. Specify a tool. So I'll go with the same face mill cutter. And in the cut levels tab, now the location of cut geometry, it can be at top or it can be at bottom. So I'm going to use pick top. I know that my zero is right over here. And we've already faced down 100 thousands. So I'm going to put in my pick top for the next operation will be 100 thousands below the origin. And my total depth is going to be half an inch. And I'll split that into two levels. So if you take a look at this drawing, you'll see that the feature is half an inch thick. And we've already taken out the 100 thousands from the top face of the stock. So I changed my pick top and the total depth. And then I'll add a cleanup pass and then generate it. So this creates the boss feature around the part. I'll pause and simulate to end. So we now have the boss feature created. In the next step, I would like to go ahead and program these holes around the feature. Hole machining. I'm going to use drilling, select these drill points, apply a drill filter. These are 5 8 inch holes, so it automatically excludes the larger holes, even though I selected them by applying the filter. We'll pick a 5 8 inch drill bit. Again, going to the cut parameters, you have the control to specify the location of drill point. So in this particular case, I'm going to use at bottom. So I could select at bottom because the holes go all the way through on this feature. And the geometry, what you have, is at the bottom of the part. I'm going to specify the depth, which is going to be half an inch, and also add the tool tip to drill depth. I could specify a sorting as well, and then pick generate. So this would drill the holes through. To the finished depth. Now you could either select at bottom or you could have used pick top and specified the Z value. So it was just easier to use at bottom in this particular case. Now the final two operations are going to be a hole pocketing for programming the inside bore and then a final operation would be a profile to bring it to the finished size of the part. So we'll add a two axis hole pocketing. We'll pick this as our part region. I'm going to use a three quarter inch end mill. In the cutting parameters, I could set the geometry at bottom. The total depth is going to be one inch and I can specify the parameters for uh, the um, step down, step overs, entry and exits, and then generate. And now you'll notice that since I chose at bottom, the final cut does not cut below where the bottom of the geometry is. Now if you'd like to go past the bottom, then you would have to change your location of cut geometry to pick top. And you can specify the top to be minus 0.1 because we faced it down. And then you can specify the total depth. I could say I want to go 50 thousands below the bottom, 1.05, and then generate. You will now notice that this would go 50 thousands below the bottom. So if you'd like to cut past the floor, that's how you would be able to control it by specifying the location of cut geometry to be at top and specify your total cut depth. The last operation is going to be the profile, two axis and profiling. I would pick this as my control geometry of the part region, select the tool, cut parameters, Specify the cut level, cut depth, the total cut depth. I could leave it as zero 
if I just need one pass around the bottom edge of the part and not having to specify any additional depth unless you want to have multiple cut levels. And again, if you want it to go slightly below the origin, then you'd have to use the pick top option. So folks, you can see here by just from a 2D drawing, you were able to program this part to achieve the exact result of the finished part that was modeled in 3D, but even though you were supplied with just like a 2D drawing. So by using the location of cut geometry or cut depth control, you can accomplish uh, these results without having to have a 3D part model.